In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at transparencies and lenses. Now, transparency gives you the ability to apply varying levels of opacity to an object so that you can see underlying objects. For example, I have a rectangle on my page with a yellow fill. I'm going to click on my transparency icon, and then when I left click and drag, I can create a fountain fill type transparency over this object. On my interactive property bar, I have the ability to remove the transparency, make it a uniform transparency. I can also create the fountain transparency as you've just seen. Typically transparencies are applied to vector objects. However, in this tutorial, we're going to be applying them to bitmap images. Let's go ahead and delete this object from the file menu. I'm going to select import. I'm going to browse and I'm going to import a couple of images. So I'm going to go ahead and select these images holding the control key down. These are the three images that I want to bring in. I'm going to click import. Tapping the space bar will drop them in one at a time on top of each other. With this last image, I want to align that with the bottom. So I'm going to hold the shift key down. I'll select this element and tap B for bottom. Now, when we select objects, there's a number of different ways of selecting elements on a page. I'm going to use something called the Digger tool. The Digger tool is basically holding down the Alt key. When I select an object, you'll notice on my status bar that I have my lighthouse image selected. It's actually dug down one level. If I go into my object manager, you can actually see this happening. So this is my lighthouse image. If I hold the Alt key down and I click here again, I now have the Alaska image. Once again, it will select the top one. So it allows me to dig down through the various objects. With this particular object, I'm going to grab my transparency tool. I'm going to left click and drag towards the upper corner. You'll notice that I've made this portion of the bitmap transparent. Now I can play with this a little bit, but let me first of all grab the next image. I can select my pick tool by tapping the space bar, hold the alt key down, click once more, and you'll see that I now have the lighthouse image selected. I'm going to tap my space bar, and the space bar actually toggles back and forth between the pick tool and the current tool selected. So I now have my transparency tool selected. I'm going to left click and drag straight up, and you'll see that I now can see the mountains in behind. Let me just do some fine adjustments to this. I have the ability of adjusting the feathering on here as well. My image is actually almost done. The last thing I want to do before the final tweaking is put a colored background in behind this. I don't like how we've got nice warm oranges down here, but we go into a cool blue up here. So I'm going to double click my rectangle tool. That's going to add a page frame around my document. I'm going to left click on my orange. That will give me an orange fill. Now I'm going to Hold the Alt key down. I'm going to click on this image. Note that I have the lighthouse selected. With my Alt key still held down, I'll click once more. I now have the Alaska image selected. Let me go ahead and I'll select my transparency tool once again. And I'm going to give this a slight bit of transparency up here. This now is giving me the orange that I'm looking for. Let me pull this down a bit. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. I'll bring this up further. I don't want that harsh of an orange up there. I can pull this down and I have the ability of adjusting the feathering. So very quick and very easy. I've taken three images plus a rectangle and created a nice image. I'm going to select my pick tool. Shift F4. We'll zoom to the entire document. F4 of course zooms to everything drawn on the page. I can now do some fine tuning. For example, by selecting this top image, I'll select my transparency tool and I can play with this a little bit until I get the effect that I'm looking for. I find that the lighthouse image is a little bit dark at the top, so I'm going to select the lighthouse image and I can select it in the object manager as well. I'll pull this down a bit and I can adjust my feathering. Okay, I kind of like that. Now, let's talk a little bit about lenses. Lenses are very similar to a transparency, and in fact, you'll notice on my status bar at the bottom, this particular transparency is being referred to as a lens. To access the lenses, from my Windows menu, down to Dockers, under Effects, I'll select Lenses. And in here, I have a number of different lenses that I can use. Before I go ahead and use a lens, however, I'm going to select everything on the page, 
holding the shift key down I'll double click my rectangle tool and that's actually going to put a rectangle on top of everything I can come through here and I can select various colors and that will apply it to this image you'll notice in my lens drop down I have a number of different types of lenses that I can apply for example I have add color and I can change this color to whatever I want it's a great way to give it a specific effect I also have other things such as custom color map where I can do various colors from and to I can change these and get some rather interesting effects from that So if you're trying to create a design like this, just have fun with it. Play around in the lens docker and uh, see what you can create with it. It's, as I say, it's a lot of fun and very easy to do. If you've enjoyed this tutorial and you're looking for additional resources, head on over to the Discovery Center at learn.corel.com. You'll also find a number of regularly scheduled training events, Corel customer forums, as well as my book entitled Bring It Home with Corel Draw, a guide to in-house graphic design, and the essentials of Corel Draw X8 from lynda.com. Thanks for watching.